Hey, man. What's up, dude? <laughs> Have you ever heard of Ida Wood? Ida Wood. Ida Wood. Um, <laughs> well, if I knew, Ida would tell you, but I, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I know. Say that, say that sentence again. If I knew, Ida would tell you. Ida would tell you. Yeah, that's a weird. That's a weird. Like, it doesn't feel right. Ida Wood. Who's Ida Wood? Ah, uh, okay. So, um, where to start this story? Speaking of theft, I, uh, <laughs> I was l- looking for my package the other day. I bought two new odd job hats. We literally okay? sat down 15 minutes ago to start recording this episode. Jaron went on a long tangent about something, and we don't said, say something. We I went probably- on a long tangent about how much I cr- <laughs> hate Chris Angel. Put it and in the episode. Said, we said cut that part. Let's, put it in the after the fiddle. Let's save an ad break for. Like, can we do an anti ad for Chris Angel, please? <laughs> That's how much I hate this guy. And she goes over my dead body. I don't wish of anyone's demise. Unless I have a rich relative I don't know, then I hope they perish. Hey guys, welcome to Treason Anonymous. <laughs> don't worry about what's going on in there. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's it fine. It doesn't concern Everything's you. fine. <laughs> don't worry about it. Things I learned last night. Uh, and then we start. We're like, let's restart. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's start a new episode. We'll Ida cut that Wood, part out. Here we go. And I'm glad you brought it up because <laughs> I was looking for my hats today <laughs> and I look at my security <laughs> camera footage and this woman straight up stole my package. She sees the camera. She goes, oh, backs away <laughs> as if maybe the camera didn't get her reaches around the corner and grabs the box and then just walks through like it's her box and you see the whole thing. She didn't walk through like it was her. Box. Oh, yeah, she's she got a limp like she's she got a boot something. on her foot <laughs> and so she limps and she can't she can't balance without her arms flailing. You know what I'm talking about? So she's walking like yeah, she looks like one of the toys in Toy Story. Yeah, so if you're in Kansas City and you see a, a limping lady take out her other leg for me. Yeah, yeah take her down. She's got my hats. Yeah, this yeah, yeah what I'm she's saying. wearing a hat. That's way too big for her head. Huge, <laughs> dude. Here's what I'm saying though is that that lady doesn't realize that she stole from a psychopath. I don't got anything to do. All right, I don't got a day job. We're gonna leave yeah. here. I'm and mad that I'm offended. here right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to yeah. be home looking through my peephole <laughs> waiting on her. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing. A lot of people don't know about me. I'm dangerous. All right. I'm not physically. I'm not going to hurt her. What are you going to do? All Sit right. on your porch and just say cool hat. No, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put two thousand and one dollars and an air tag in a box. I'm going <laughs> to let her steal that. She's going to be a felon. All right. <laughs> I'm going to ruin this lady's <laughs> life. I mean more than it, she's stealing packages on Porsche. Her, yeah. her life's not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. I'm going to make sure it never is. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? Like I'm, I'm going to keep it there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I'm happy you found a new passion. Well, I love having an enemy, and right now I have two. Yeah, who's the other one? Chris Angel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got all, right. All, I got all my stuff out of the way. Sweet. On uh, March 5th, 1907 or 1931. Sorry, way off on the date. March 5th, 1931. Um, at. Uh, uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Call me Chris Angel. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's what pilots do. <laughs> Great. At uh at the Herald Square Hotel in New York City, um, a door on the I think sixth or seventh floor opened up into a room that has not been opened in twenty four years. Uh, and what? a ninety three year old woman, um, who with a hunchback uh, and half clothed, ran down the hall yelling that her sister was dying. Uh, she comes out of that room. Yeah, the room, the door's not been open for twenty four years. <laughs> well, it's been open, but the room hasn't been used for twenty four years. Um, Why <laughs> hasn't the room been used for twenty four years? Because her sister died in there twenty four years ago. No, that's not what happened. Um, well, you did say nineteen oh seven, which is twenty four years before nineteen thirty one. So you messed up. You you messed up some dates here. <laughs> well, did, you do <laughs> did you do it again? Did you do it again? Did you do it again? Okay. 
<laughs> so on March 31st. Mar- no, March, March 7th. March 5th. March 5th. 1931. 1931. 1931. 93 year old woman <laughs> comes running out of a door that has not been open for 24 years. 24 years. <laughs> Do you want to start over? Let's start over. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> what happened? Uh, so, so she comes running out half naked. She comes running out Top half or naked. Bottom. <laughs> I don't know. Actually. You said half closed. I don't, I don't know. I, I actually don't know the answer to that. Everything I just said, I said half closed. Nobody <laughs> took the time to specify. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, that's the problem with journalism in America. No yeah. one specifies. Now you're really trying to get away from it. That's fine. Just go over the story. <laughs> Just recover. I've recovered. Uh, so hey, she goes right. I know down you're the hall. new to podcasting. <laughs> Shut your stupid mouth. But she goes. She goes down the hall, yelling that her her sister was dying and she needs help. Was dying actively. Actively dying. Okay. Um, uh, and so the hotel employees are like, "Okay, what room?" And then they were like, "Oh, weird. I thought there was a ghost in that room." Uh, and she goes, "Yeah, it's been me <laughs> for twenty four years. <laughs> We've been trying to get out." So they get a doctor. Uh, the doctor comes and her sister does end up passing away and then everyone was like, hey, where'd you come from? Because uh, you know this room like we didn't, none of us have ever seen you before. We've been looking working in this hotel for 15 years. None of us have seen you. We don't know who you are and she's like, oh, I'm Ida Wood and so they go back in their, their and they system. Go, oh, sorry. You should have said that <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and so they go back in her system and I guess while well, they don't have a system, they go back in their binder. And they yeah, put their, and their put little their portfolio. On. They put their white gloves on and open mm, up the binder. Yes, <laughs> and uh, they find Ida Wood. Yeah, she has. Um, she, she just not paid rent for twenty four years. <laughs> well, no, she has been in the hotel for twenty four years, paying cash, sliding it in an envelope in a slip in like a like the cash whatever box. No one has seen her though. For twenty four years, she's been paying for this room, or collected the cash. <clears throat> no, they collected the cash, but everyone was just like, "Who are like?" You would think that someone's been in this room for twenty four years. The staff would probably start to get to know them, you know, like kind of like a sure, like a sweet life of Zach and Cody situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but th- not this one. Um, and has so she they, been in and out of it though? She leaves. She gets no, groceries. No. So w- there were uh, a couple maids who would try to change the sheets in there and they would refuse. They would say, no, you can't come in here um, and who would refuse uh, Ida Wood and her now dead sister um, would say you can't come in here. Yeah, they would say no. So don't come they in. knew someone no, was don't in come there. In. Well, they knew, but they didn't know who she was and they knew that room hadn't been open for 24 years or they had okay. they hadn't had access to that room for 20 so she's years. using 24 year old sheets. I mean, there were occasions where she changed them and she did. She would. There was a there was a specific hotel manager, like a night manager, who was like, "Yeah, sometimes, uh, like I'll go up there and ask if they need anything." And, and they, they let for me like, in, and we play <laughs> poker, and I, I drink into the night with them. But other than that, I don't think I I've, don't think I've seen her the whole time. We've I been would. <laughs> I guess we've never exchanged names. She's always she's just, just been always that friendly been, old lady to me. She's always just been room five fifty five. <laughs> yeah, um, and she's like every once in a while they ask for crackers um bacon or eggs or something like that. Um, uh, it's a hotel. This is a hotel. She's paying like a nightly rate. Yeah, yeah um, for 24 years for 24 years. Yeah, uh, and so they they go in and and fish. That's pretty much all it is crackers fish bacon and eggs. It's like all they're taking. Okay, um, and so they after this whole thing happens, they were like, hey, we need to probably go check out what's going on in your room. And she's like, oh, no, that's fine. Like, don't worry about she's that. Like, you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> don't worry about what's going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's it doesn't, fine. It doesn't concern. Everything's you. fine. <laughs> don't worry about it. So they go up in there and and uh, they're looking through a room, just kind of chatting with her while they while they do it. She's chatting kinda, with her, <laughs> like, yeah. So like, what do you uh, do for a living? <laughs> she's like, oh, I work remote. <laughs> yeah, it's nineteen thirty one. What is she doing? <laughs> and so they're going through a room. And uh, they're they're talking to her. her. It's it's like an episode of Hoarders. There's cracker boxes. How big everywhere. is this hotel? It's a two room suite. So it's it's how a big bigger, is the hotel? Oh, the hotel. Um, hold on, let me look at this picture of it. I can only see half of it, but it looks like it's at least six stories. Yeah, go, in the picture. Good size, good size so, hotel. Yeah, it's, it's a decent. It's New York City. It's Manhattan. Um, okay, but 1931. So not. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's not today, Manhattan. But 
I'm saying but it's not like a bed and breakfast that she's saying. It. 1931 Manhattan is probably like today Columbus, Ohio. Did you I know? Would assume. Did you know what that <laughs> London London Tipton? Yes. <laughs> no, London is the same like square miles <laughs> as Springfield, Missouri. Did you know that? I hate you so much. Did I say that in the Springfield episode? I did you say that before? Shut up. I hate that you're trying to act like I didn't already say that. What are you talking about? I hate you so much right now. You're the worst person I've ever met in my life. Okay, well, we're, we can move on. We don't have to do whatever this bit is. Sorry for giving you relevant Sorry information. Okay. <laughs> you know what you're doing. What episode was that? Was that Springfield? What are you talking oh about? Oh my God. Okay, so. Mm. <laughs> That's made me so irrationally mad. I can't move on. I can't get past it. You can't get past okay, it. So they're in the hotel. <clears throat> they're looking through the room and they're talking to her and they think this lady's seen now because they're asking her questions. She's 93, right? And she's got a hunchback. Um, she's mostly blind. Um, and they're talking to her. She's talking all about her life. And she's like, she's like, yeah, you know, back in the day, she said we lived. I mean, we here we, <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> back in the day, we lived here. It's been twenty four years. <laughs> you know. No, she's talking like back in the day. Like Where the she knows 1880s. all of them too. She knows all their names, all their backstories. <laughs> she goes, Jeffrey. <laughs> I was here the day you got hired. I was here the day you were born. <laughs> And I was here the day you did that thing <laughs> that you thought no one saw, but I did. <laughs> and I was here the day you died. Ah, 1954. Uh, 19 <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jeffrey. <laughs> do, <laughs> do you pray? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she's talking about her life. She's like a typical old lady. Do we have a picture of her? Um, well, I got a picture of her when she's young. Let me see if I can grab a picture of her when just she put was it old. in an AI. Make it old. <laughs> make make it old. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'll just I'll just say. Make it old. Make it old. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's an. I mean, this one's still kind of young. This is the oldest I can find. I'm pretty sure this is still. Like probably honestly, probably before she even moved into the hotel. This like she's still relatively young in this in this photo. Uh, hold on. Okay. What in the? Oh man! This so is... she moved in 1907. Yes. She lived there for 24 years. Yes. They have record of her moving in. Which day and night? Oh. Yeah, that's what I was kind of picturing. I mean, like an older version of that for sure. Yeah. So this, I mean, she's still pretty young in this. Yeah. But this is the oldest I could find her. Um, and so she she starts telling stories of her life. Okay. Um, and so this is the life story that they piece together in this conversation from her. Um. <laughs> Where was she in 1912? <laughs> uh, the war. <laughs> uh, okay. No. So. Uh, she was born uh, in uh, New Orleans okay. in January 1838. She grew up uh, from a father who owned a sugar plantation, um, a pretty wealthy life uh, childhood, uh, but she wanted more. She didn't love her experience in New Orleans and wanted to see the world and experience different things. Sure. And so she moved to New York City. Uh, where she said, I want to find myself an influential uh, businessman to marry. Yeah. And so she started Get yourself a sugar daddy, Ida. <laughs> so she started uh, uh, buying like the equivalent of like Forbes magazines to find out who all like the male influencers were like the business influencers. Oh, okay, which is the 19. <laughs> what year is this? Uh, she's doing this. This is now 18 like the early 1850s. Yeah, I mean that's like that's like your Instagram Explore page. You yeah. know, yeah, <laughs> let me see if I can find any like let's see if I can find any entrepreneurs singles. Yeah, and so she finds this man um, named Benjamin Wood. Okay, and Benjamin Wood uh, was the owner of the New York Daily newspaper, uh, which Interesting sidebar about him, real quick. He bought this newspaper in 1860, and in 1861, the U.S. federal government banned it um, and stopped him from doing business because he knew too much. 
<laughs> well, because they believed that he was um, allowing Confederate yeah, spies. I was going to say it's to yeah. put codes in the paper in like the advice columns, and so they shut him down. And then eighteen months later, they let him open business back up. And so, okay, the paper after it opened back up was pretty successful. Well, yeah, I mean, it led to the war. <laughs> It's like this. This paper did the war. Uh, well, I mean, like the codes, and it was like, <laughs> all right, guys, time to start. Um, so he was running this paper, and this paper was a, a, a major paper, and he was very successful sure. because of it, and was uh, floated in all the it circles in New York, right? He was in Forbes exactly magazine, whatever that magazine for. was called, and so she popped him off a letter, um, and w- with because she knew she knew she had no way to actually meet this guy. Like, yeah, what do you? Didn't, what are you doing? The same you circles. write like if you like pina coladas. <laughs> Similar, caught in the rain. Similar concept. Very similar concept. I uh, mean, <clears throat> wow. To be like a rich guy in yeah. the late 1800s and just get like fan mail. <laughs> and you gotta be like, was that picture included in it? <laughs> you know? And you're like, whoa. Whoa. Ida. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, Eunice. It's, it's oh, literally, well. it's, it's DMs. It's the same thing as yeah. DMs, but it's, you can't like, you don't have a general tab. It's not as direct over to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hers was she said having heard of you often. I venture to address you from hearing a young lady. One of your former loves speaks of you. I don't know who she found that speaks of him um, and he said she She's says made it up. <laughs> she says you are fond of new faces. I fancy that as I am new in the city and have an affairs de cour uh, that I might contract. Do you think and when people be- read our stuff a hundred years from now will sound pretty stupid. Yeah, probably. I mean, but like we sound less educated than the, the people who write in the early 1900s. Yeah, you know, do you think people will sound even dumber than we are? <laughs> I mean, if if no history cap. continues trending the way it's trending, then yeah, probably no cap. She's risen in this letter, <laughs> but yeah, long story short, essentially she's saying, hey, I know you're married, but I'm new oh. to town and I think I look pretty good. Um, so why don't you are you interested in be having less an married like she straight up says are you interested in having an what affair? does she say in the letter? She said how does she word it? Well, she said uh, I Doesn't fancy that as I am new in the city and and in affairs de courier that I might contract and be agreeable in intimacy with you of as long oh. of duration as you see fit to have it. Um, She's like hey, <laughs> and she says I believe that I'm not extremely bad looking. <laughs> Uh, and then she says, if you would wish an interview, address a letter to number Broadway PO box, New York, stating that what time we may meet. So she literally was like, I'll, I'll do a like, job hey. interview. <laughs> I'll interview yeah. for the role of your mistress. Uh, and so he and he's like, on it. lady, I got a line out the door. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like this and you want more of our show, we've got plenty of other episodes. One of my favorites is Action Park, a super sketchy theme park that was basically overrun by teenagers and they just made the rules. Uh, it was in New Jersey. It was a wild story, uh, but we did a whole episode about it and I think you'd like it. So uh, when you're done with this one, go check out that episode. But for now, back to this one. So they meet in a park a couple weeks later. And they have a ten-year-long affair until his wife dies. Um, and then he's like, "This isn't exciting anymore." <laughs> <laughs> his wife dies, and he's like, "Yeah, it's kind of over for me now." You know, like it's. <laughs> they met. They met, and she was twenty. He was, or no, she was eighteen. He was thirty-nine. Oh, okay. Um, and so uh, they have a ten-year-long affair, and then his wife dies, and they get married. Um, a sidebar: By the time they got married, they already had a child together that was. Oh jeez, um, like ten years old, um, and <laughs> for some reason, is that what people just did? No, that was very not okay. It was very very well, taboo. Yeah. Um, and so people, I don't mean like it was okay, but I mean like, did a lot of people do that? You think have like whole second families, third families, maybe? I mean, probably, but I mean, people probably did it. I don't know if I would say a lot of people, but it was it was a very taboo thing, and everybody, especially in the 30s when newspaper articles started coming out about her, said that was really weird that nobody cared that they had a child before they were married, especially before his wife died. 
Um, and so that was a weird thing that happened. Um, yeah, but if you got enough money, I, I guess um, you can do anything. So they get married uh, and uh, he his newspaper goes from good to great and starts being like the top paper in New York City. It's a sure. huge deal. This is like the uh, what 1870s now 18 early 1880s. Yeah, uh, he runs for Congress. The Ronald Reagan era. <laughs> No, I'm with you. <laughs> he runs. He runs for Congress and he wins, and so he becomes a congressman. Oh, um, and serves two terms as a congressman. Um, and now she is dancing with princes overseas right. and like hanging out with Abraham Lincoln, like legitimately like living like a royal lifestyle. She's not hanging out with Abraham Lincoln That's what in, she the said. Seven, in the seventies. Yeah, in the eighties. Yeah. Well, oh. no, no, this was early on. Oh, okay. this was earlier. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, no, no, in the heat. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> well, that's, uh, the, the important part of the story is that everybody who was listening to her story was like, this lady's senile. <laughs> <She's> crazy. <laughs> None of this stuff happened. This is her story that she's telling everyone. Um, and so she's, and so she said that uh, she's living this high life. She's doing all this stuff, but her husband, Benjamin, he had a gambling problem. Mm. And uh, this guy's got a lot of vices then. Yeah, mistresses, yeah. gambling, yeah, greed, sure, the Confederacy, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I've just got like, uh, yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Treason Anonymous. <laughs> um, you know, you got to admit you got a problem. Yeah, my I problem is that I just hate this country. I just hate America. Um, yeah, I went to this camp. It was like a men's night, <laughs> and I nailed my Confederate ideals to the cross. <laughs> I told Reagan we did that the other day. So Reagan tells me she goes, "Yeah, when I used to have like a bad thought, I would just visualize myself writing it on a piece of paper, crumpling it up, and throwing it in a trash can." And I was like, "That's, <laughs> That's funny." funny. My youth group did something that? similar. We wrote it on a piece of paper and nailed it to the cross. <laughs> She goes, no, not like my sins. And I said, yeah, we didn't either. We just wrote down stuff that we felt bad about. I think. Yeah, yeah, because you didn't want to put your real sins there. Oh, yeah, if someone looks because your youth pastor is <laughs> going to look. <laughs> yeah, one kid did that. Yeah, didn't turn out well. That was the coolest trick that Chris Angel did. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled a piece of paper out and it was all my sins. I was like, whoa, how'd you know? How'd you do that, Chris Angel? <laughs> Yeah, and then he did one of them was call. murder, though. <laughs> I was like, I haven't done that. Haven't and done he that. looked at me. He looked at the screens, the camera, <laughs> and he went, "Not yet." <laughs> and then the in memoriam came up. Yeah, of the lady who stole my package. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. And hurt then he her. walked down I'm the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> he did walk down the ladder. You idiot. I hate Chris Angel. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so, um, so he becomes a congressman, and he he's got this gambling issue. Okay, and they have two very different relationships with money. They're they're rolling in it right now. Um, his is gamble, try to make more. Well, his is is just who cares. I mean, we've got plenty of it. Um, they uh, their wealth at this time was estimated. Their net value at this time was estimated to be somewhere uh, equivalent today of around sixty one million dollars. Um, so they had a yeah, lot of money. We have proof that her husband exists, though. Like we we know who yeah, he's a real he's guy. a real guy. He's a real guy. Yeah, and every every person she's talking about talking about is real. Um, and so she, uh, but she was a saver. Like she was very frugal. She didn't want to spend money. She didn't want to blow money. Sure. Um, she had nice things, but she was conscious, you know, like and careful with it. And so her his gambling problem really bothered her more than all the other stuff. <laughs> More than the like sure. Confederacy, you know, um, <laughs> and his two other kids <laughs> with his other mistresses, his nine other families. And he's like, yeah, but I mean, like, I vetted yeah, him. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, we did interviews. We had there four was a, rounds there of was interviews. A, I was gonna say there's a four yeah. round process. We did background the checks. The board approved them. Yeah, yeah. What am I supposed to do? The investors wanted this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of them was a diversity <laughs> hire, sure. You know, <laughs> but. No one's buying our paper anymore. I don't know why. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know how to. We got. It. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I turned to gambling it's for the business. Uh, so they make a deal. They say, uh, uh, 
he and her will split half of his winnings. Anytime he wins in gambling, she gets to take half of it and save it, hide it away. And the um, other half he gets to he, blow. Yeah, he has to eat all of his own losses, though. That's not coming out of the, their savings. Okay, and so she's able to set aside two million dollars of that times money off of his Jeez. gambling winnings. So he had developed a, a problem. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, does he have people coming after him then? Uh, probably. Okay. Um, I, you know what kind of gambling is he into? Is he into like the stuff where like you don't you know he's not playing slots and winning two million dollars. <laughs> he's doing <laughs> yeah, stuff I mean, that if, if, you, if, you, if you lose too much, you got yeah. someone showing up at your house and yeah. being like, hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. He wasn't gambling. He was fixing presidential races. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You <laughs> know, lost. You got a guy showing up being like, "That's not my grenade." <laughs> you know. Um. And so, so, uh, this is this is going on there, whatever. You know. Sure. And in 1901, he dies. Um. Good. And so she, <laughs> she now takes over what's left of his fortune and the company. And so she starts running this newspaper company. And doesn't really know what she's doing. Makes a few bad hires, makes a few bad fires. Uh, the paper's struggling a little bit. Uh, and so in 1903, she decides to sell it, sells it for uh, $350,000, which is equivalent today about $8 million. Okay. Um, so a pretty sizable sale. Um, and then just kind of floats for a few years. Doesn't really do anything, um, just kind of surviving off of the money. And then in 1907, there's the great financial panic. So there's a run on the banks. Everyone's pulling their money out. It looked like there was going to be a major crash. And so she goes and she empties one of her bank accounts, which had a million dollars and it takes a million dollars cash, puts it in a net bag. The security guard described her as being very frantic as probably most of the people were during the bank run. Um, she took out a million dollars cash and then she checked into this hotel and never left. Uh, and that's the story she gave the uh, the people at the, at the hotel that were examining the room. And so the room was a mess. It was in squalor. How much is is not rent? How much is the fee every night? I mean, this is the early 1900s. So like I've got to think less than $10 a night. She's telling this story and they think oh, this lady's just you know, none of this is true. Sure, because because it looks like an episode of hoarders. There's trash all over this room. The sheets are dirty. She's it doesn't look like she's bathed in weeks except her face is weirdly immaculate. They asked her about it and they're like you look like you haven't aged like you're how old are you? She's like 93. Sure, and thank like, you. They were like, what's your skin routine? <laughs> and she actually said she literally said she said, oh, um, a couple week, a couple times a week. I'll ask for some Vaseline and I just rub it into my face for a couple hours a day. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, no every week uh, there's this new invention called Dr. Pepper and I just sit over the tub and I douse myself and I waterboard myself with Dr. Pepper to the point where I almost can't breathe. It reminds me one that life is fragile and two my skin feels flawless. Yeah, 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 yeah. So are you going to take a bath or oh, mm, the doctor's in baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. Uh, so the room's disgusting, sure. and uh, um, and her, well, and she's got her dead sister in there too. Like there's <laughs> boxes everywhere. Her dead sister's on the floor. No one's picked her up yet. Yeah. Well, that's a that's an interesting sidebar uh, as well. Is they, she said, "Don't touch her." Uh, well, no, she said she said she kept talking about the three of us in that room, and there was only two of them. <laughs> Um, oh no. So her daughter. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh -huh. Wow. Really good insight, Chris. So allegedly, Thanks. her daughter was also staying in that room with them. She also checked in. So it was her sister and her daughter that checked into this room. Is this the child? Um, yes. Okay. And in 1924, her daughter passed away. And so her daughter got sick, went to the hospital, died in the hospital. Okay. Um, but as far as they know, they didn't leave the room. They, the other two were like, yeah, you should go, go, to, the hospital. You should go to the hospital. Have and fun. Then she died there. She never came back and they were just like, I guess she's dead. Why wouldn't they leave the room? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And so there's a lot of questions here. Um, everybody, everybody that's working at the hotel is like, this is a strange story. Okay. We don't believe it for a second. This sure. lady's lost her mind. None of this is she true. crawled in the window. Yeah, sure. And so they take her downstairs. They give her one of those blankets or something and she's hanging out by the fire truck. Yeah, <laughs> the end of every good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're looking through her room, and in the shoebox, 
they find $480,000 in cash. And they said, hold on. Wait. <laughs> hmm. Hold on. <laughs> and so they start looking a little closer and then they start finding in the cracker boxes, $10,000 bills, $5,000 bills, a, a gold necklaces valued at like $40,000 in that day's currency. Like just so much money everywhere. Um, the place is literally overflowing with cash and expensive clothes and jewelry and things like that, but it's like hidden within trash. It's all covered in Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> it's so greasy. It's so, they're, like, <laughs> they're trying to count the bills, but they're just slipping out of their hands. <laughs> Who turns? I think there's four hundred eighty thousand here. I don't know. <laughs> Can't count them. Um, and uh, so <clears throat> they quickly say, "Hey, we need to take you down to a different room. We're going to put you in a different room. We're going to have um, some doctors take care of you. You're going to stay here." She couldn't understand it. She was frustrated. She thought, "You, you know, typical, they're stealing my money." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, she, but they take her down there. Um, and one Tip, of the nurses, were, you, were you about to say typical ninety three year old? <laughs> Is that what you're about to say? I was going to say, gonna gonna say, gonna say oh, typical 93 year old. Well, I was going to say the typical experience of when like someone gets put into a home where oh, it's like, I don't need to do this. Like sure. I'm fine. And but everyone's like, no, we need to take and care like, no, of you. We need no. to help you. And she's like, no, I'm fine. I can take I'm care fine, of myself. I'm fine. Like, I'm fine. Your fried chicken is not the same. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, call Abe, ask Abe. And like, and like, <laughs> like he's can't help you. He's not answering. <laughs> he's he was in the hotel with me for 10 years. <laughs> oh really? Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, one night, one of the like while she's asleep, there's a nurse like tending to her and notices like a weird lump on the side of her dress and reaches in there and finds a bag with a million dollars cash under in hidden her under dress? her dress, hidden under her dress. She's got a uh, a lump. Yeah, like a fanny pack. Yeah, yeah, like a fanny pack. <laughs> she's got a supreme fanny pack. She's sleeping just. <laughs> Is this this is on top of all the money up there? This is on top of all the money up there, and it it should be noted Dude, that this, this is a drug lord. This is before the nineteen in nineteen sixty seven. This is nineteen thirty one. Yeah, so this is like depression. Yeah, this is the depression. This is the height and of the she depression. She has one point four million dollars, million just in dollars cash and stuff in this hotel room. Um, but yeah, it, it should be noted that she was able to hold a lot more because in nineteen sixty nine, in nineteen sixty nine, Nixon as part of the war on drugs, got rid of a bunch of large denomination bills. So back then they had thousand dollar bills. What? Five thousand dollar bills, ten thousand dollar bills. No. Yeah, um, but as part of the war on drugs because it was who's that guy? It was really easy. I think that's Polk. If I remember that's right. chase JP Morgan. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Who is that guy? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was Polk. Who is, is on the one Polk? That's Madison. Is that's this one Madison. Polk? I swear one of them's Polk. That's, that's Cleveland. Cleveland. I could have swore one of them was Polk. Well, you're dumb. Maybe you're this wrong. is JP Morgan Chase. <laughs> Who, yeah, Google that. Who's on the? Who's on the? Hold on. Um, but they stopped. No way. They stopped them because because of they this were lady. well because they were easier to uh, launder money with. Well, yeah, it was huge amounts of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Salmon P. Chase is his name. Uh, he's the most accomplished politician in our nation's history that never served as a president. Um, so he was a governor and you senator from Ohio. Uh, and he Salmon? was the. He was a sec. Yeah, his, salmon, his name is salmon like the fish salmon chase. Yes, exactly. Okay, Cool, cool, cool. Um, this is my son tilapia and he was he actually served as secretary of the treasury under Abe Lincoln and became chief chief justice of the Supreme Court. So he did a lot, um, but he was on the ten thousand dollar bill. Wow. Uh, uh, Who's eight? the other guys? Uh, five thousand. You know, and that's what goes to show. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you do. If you're not president, no one will care. <laughs> it really. Is. And that's why it meant so much to that guy. <laughs> that's why he had to do it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. 
Hey, thanks again for watching this episode. If you're enjoying it and you're enjoying Tillin, you've been around for a little bit, I want to invite you to be a part of our Patreon. Uh, we have uh, a Patreon that has uh, early access to all of our episodes, ad-free content, both audio and video. Uh, we have a Discord with our hosts and producers. That's a ton of fun getting to hang out with all of our patrons in there. Uh, we also do uh, once a month now, we do these live streams with our patrons. Uh, we hang out, we get to know each other, we eat pizza. It's a blast uh, along with a bunch of other benefits like uh, a merch discounts uh, message on your birthday, like fun stuff. Uh, it's definitely worth it. We're having a blast with our patrons, um, but if that doesn't sound like something for you, uh, then get the heck out of here. Just kidding. No, we love you. Uh, uh, thanks for checking out Dylan podcast. How do they, how do they get it though? I realized I forgot to put a CTA in mind. Oh, damn. You were doing gum it. Yeah, they can text Dylan to six, six, eight, six, six. Thanks, Jaren. Uh, Alexander Hamilton was the thousand. Um, Who? Which it looks like it says Cleveland in the picture, but the this says <laughs> Hamilton. That one. Yeah. Um. Oh wait. Okay. Alexander Hamilton's still on a bill, right? Oh, okay. And so later they replaced it with Grover Cleveland on the thousand dollar. Okay. The five thousand dollar had James Madison. Um. Anyways, so they had higher denomination bills. Who's on the five? So, the five thousand? No, five dollar bill. Abe Lincoln, right? No. George W. George W. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the five is Abe Lincoln. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Who do you think on it? I don't know. <laughs> who's on the Who's on the ten? Uh, I can't. First, <laughs> I can't remember a single bill right now. Here's a five dollar bill. Obviously, on Etsy I can remember. Oh, I remember Washington, right? And then there's apparently Lincoln, <laughs> and then there's uh, the ten is uh, Hamilton. Hamilton, yeah, it's also Hamilton. And then the so they moved him. They moved him from the five thousand to the ten. The twenty he was mad. Is uh, 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 I can picture him right now, Jackson. I think you're right. No, I Je- think it is Jackson. Jefferson. Jackson is Jackson. You're Jackson. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> but anyways, this is how she was able to have this much cash literally on her person because there were $10,000 bills. So she had a million dollars worth of 10,000. Which one bills. is Harriet Tubman on? Um, she was uh, wasn't she like the secretary I think she was of on state? The 20. I want to say she was on. The, yeah, it was a $20 bill. Did the, were those are those in circulation yet? I don't think so. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's how she was able to have so much cash on her because she had ten thousand dollar bills. Okay. And so a million dollars and ten thousand dollar bills. It's a different ballgame. How many is it, Tim? I don't know, like twenty four <laughs> years. <laughs> What'd you just say? <laughs> I said I don't know, like twenty four years. I think nineteen oh seven. Okay. <laughs> And so everyone's starting to say, oh, maybe there's something to this story. So this hits the news. Sure. Um, and her family starts coming out of the woodwork. Um, everyone's like, oh, grandma. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and it was 380 people laid claim, like got lawyers laid claim and said, hey, yeah, we're heirs to her fortune. We should take over and yeah. be yeah, yeah, get yeah. control of that. And so. Um, and she goes over <laughs> my dead body. <laughs> she goes, I'll fight all of you. <laughs> and we're like, I think we and she do. did. They <laughs> set it up one on one. She fought matches. 300 people. 379. No, no, no. All knockouts. She fought 293 of them. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, 86 of them were. They watched. <laughs> yeah. 86 of them slowly. It was like it was like uh, it was like the Pharisees when Jesus was like, "Why don't you throw a stone?" And they one by one, they all they they watched this lady <laughs> kick 292 <laughs> butts, and they were like, "Yeah, I don't want to do that know. anymore." I don't know. How much money is it again? I don't know. It doesn't seem super worth it. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So 
a bunch of people are trying to claim her money now. Yeah, so before she's even gone. Yeah, she's still here, and they're, which they're is like, such a sad thing. Reagan's grandma does this. Reagan's grandma is ninety nine years old. Yeah. Every time we go to the house, every yeah. for I we've been together for five and a half years. Yeah, and since the day I've met this lady, yeah. every time we're there, every time we're on the phone, yeah. is well, this is my last Christmas. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at this point, we're like. No, it's not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to be here after I am. I don't know. Could be, uh, but probably not. And so this massive legal battle begins um, of people trying to lay claim to her money. Sure. Uh, the two largest groups that actually have like a stake in it are the Woods, her husband's family, and her birth family, the Mayfields, um, who were the sugar cane farmers. Uh, and so there's a big legal battle that lasts a couple years. Um, and in the court throughout the course of this legal battle, she's her health starts to really decline. Yeah, and a lot of people think that it was it's the really result stressful. of yeah the stress of the situation because obviously there's the legal battle over her money, but she also was removed from her home. Her <laughs> sister is gone. Her sister died. She was removed from what was home to her for 24 years, and they moved her to a room the floor below, the directly below the room directly below her. So, so she could like hear taunting. when she could hear are, her room. Yeah, um, <laughs> she still talked to the ghosts was, though. <laughs> her room was speaking to her. Every no, night. I meant like she could hear like footsteps <laughs> if people like, were room, in her room. The room told me you guys weren't being good to it. <laughs> yeah, that's where I feel like when my neighbors upstairs slam a door, and I was like, I yeah. never would, I never did that to yeah. that door. I never did that. Yeah, because you used to live there. Yeah, yeah. The room still speaks to you. <laughs> it does. <laughs> And it doesn't like the new one. No new people. <laughs> it told me. <laughs> the room doesn't like. And the it new told me people. not to tell. Him. <laughs> I told him. I saw him in the parking lot. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, man. You know, I live in the old. I live upstairs for you." Know? And I said, "Yeah, I used to live there. If you get any packages, let me know." Also, <laughs> the room doesn't like you. <laughs> Excuse me. What? The room doesn't like you. Which room? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> also, if you see a lady with a limp walking around, would you, you let me know? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tackle her. <laughs> it's a whole new meaning to read. I'm gonna the room. step on her. She got a boot on her leg. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that, on that leg. Out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, I'm gonna stomp on I'm those toes. On I'm gonna stomp on your toes. <laughs> Um, so this legal battle is going on. She ends up in the middle of the legal battle dying of pneumonia a year after uh, they found her. And so then now the legal battle has legs because now it's like, okay, well, someone's getting somebody's getting this money. Yeah, yeah. Um, they end up digging into her finances. They find $20 million tied to her. Name. Holy um, cow. And so these were in other banks that she had not liquidated. Um, uh, and, and that's in that day's money. Yeah, uh, so just bonkers cash. Um, and so <laughs> this legal battle begins and attorneys for the state are like, okay, we're taking this over. We're going to start to investigate and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Sure. So they, they start digging and this is the story that they unravel. Um, Ida Wood was born in New Orleans in uh, the 18. What did I say? 30s. Sure. Her birthday was was correct. She wasn't lying about that, um, but she was not born to money. She was uh, born into poverty. Her parents were immigrants and they had nothing growing up and she yeah. hated it. She hated her childhood. She hated being poor and she wanted to change it. So one day in New Orleans, she went and she saw a palm reader uh, <laughs> to find out is it worth it. Uh, <laughs> And so she goes to the palm reader. The palm life reader. or what? Like, <laughs> is what worth it? What do you mean? Oh, I'm here to find out if it's worth it. <laughs> if what's worth it? Going on, <laughs> continuing, <laughs> anything at all. The palm reader said, "There's a really good room in your future." No, oh, that room likes you. <laughs> so the palm reader reads her palms and says, "Oh, you're a very lucky girl. You're going to meet a wealthy man." Okay. Uh, and your life's going to change for the better. And so she waits a couple years for this. She's That's like, what that crystal lady told Reagan too. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's crap. <laughs> and so, uh, so she waits a couple years. She's met a few rich people, but I had to. I had to intervene. I was yeah. like, hey, 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 not hey, that hey. one. No, 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 no. Yeah, what? <laughs> what? I became her. Like, no, you can't date that guy. Yeah, you, can't you have date to date me. Guy. You have to date me. But you're not rich. And she didn't want to for a while. <laughs> <laughs> what is this <laughs> scenario? 
<laughs> no, you have to date me. You have to date me. Anyway, um, so so she waits a couple years and no rich men come into her life because yeah. why would they? She's in New Orleans, living in poverty. Like where? What circle is she just going to run into a rich guy? Um, so she starts to realize that, and she says, "I need to take matters into my own hands." And so she packs up and she moves to New York, and she says, "I'm going to read meet a rich man." She gets to New York and again realizes the same scenario. She's like, there's no way I'm going to just run into a rich dude. <laughs> and so she sure. starts buying those magazines and yeah. shopping around for so a rich she guy. She did do that. Yeah. And she finds Benjamin and c- gets into this affair with him and they actually do get married. Um, and they had that child. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> remember? You remember? Well, they did it. That child was not their child. That child was her sister. And she convinced her to move in with them and tell everyone that that was their kid that they had out of wedlock and legally change her last name. So that way they could move. out. How much younger is her sister? It was like a younger, younger sister. And so, but it was young enough to where it like made sense in that relationship. Okay. So this, this girl probably moved up there like when she was, I don't know, five or six, but they had been in their affair for like 10 years. And so everyone like believed that. Oh, sure. You guys had that. Oh, you guys had that kid. Yeah. But it was it was her sister, and they you literally changed crazy? his name. Yeah. It wasn't even her sister. Her <laughs> sister wasn't even five or six at the time. Her sister was thirty six years old. <laughs> She's just so small that she convinced the state of New York that she was a child. She got uh, put in the, the foster child. system, <laughs> and then they adopted. And then they adopted. Her. They went through a whole extra step. <laughs> they did a whole thing. <laughs> they put her through the foster. They were like, system. we got to put her in foster care. It has to be believable. It's got it. We got to be heroes. <laughs> When people say, what have you done? I'm going to say, I adopted from foster care. What have you done? <laughs> That's an important detail. Her name wasn't even Ida Wood. It was Ellen Walsh. Walsh. Ellen, Ellen Walsh. Walsh. Yeah, she changed her name to Ida Wood when she got to New York, um, but she married Benjamin Wood. Yeah, she na- sorry. She changed her name to Ida Mayfield Kay. and she uh, she was Ellen Walsh. She just picked a rich family from New Orleans and said that was my family. And so when the Mayfields got in the legal battle, they just found out they're like, oh, this yeah. And then they also had to be They're like, like, that's our inheritance. Oh, okay. yeah, that's us. I guess not. Anymore. <laughs> and then the Walshes are like, oh, hold on, well, hold on. Let's get it. Throw our hat in the ring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would love to find out. I've got a, like a rich relative somewhere. <laughs> and then everything else was totally true. Like they had that socialite life and uh, uh, they went uh, the attorneys tracked down a lot of the people that she talked about having relationships with everybody, including Abe Lincoln was like, oh yeah, she was great. Hey, he's like, you know, my memory is kind of foggy. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think about it, but there's just my, my memory. My, 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 my mind's got a lot of holes in it right now. <laughs> my memory is just my memory is so foggy. My memory has got a lot of holes. Sometimes if I put myself in like a movie theater, I can see I can picture it. I can picture it. <laughs> ah, Ida Wood. <laughs> yeah, we spent like 10 years in that hotel room. Yeah. Together. <laughs> Pretty foggy, but it's there. No, but she was she was this important socialite figure in the New York subculture uh, of the time and everybody knew who she was and she was very significant in the late 18 18- Hundreds. 80s. Yeah, uh, up until her husband died and she took over the newspaper and then disappeared for 24 years. Uh, no one is exactly sure why she got the hotel room. W- what the leading theory is that she saw what was happening to the economy and she was a very frugal person who was scared of losing her money and she said I'm going to hide and so she took all the money she could so she could have it in her person. Well, I mean look how thirsty people are. You know <laughs> people will for no reason. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're crazy. I mean, the second everyone found out she had a lot that's of money, saying, all of a sudden like, you have oh, 300 people money. trying yeah. to take the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. So she hid herself away in this hotel room and she called up her other sister and was like, hey, change your name. You're moving into this hotel room with me and they literally they didn't leave. They stayed in that hotel room for 24 years. No one saw them. Even the hotel like didn't recognize most of the people in the hotel didn't recognize them. Uh, they outlasted most of the people in the ho- the employees. Yeah, and then she died and and so the attorneys were like, Okay, well, who is the rightful heir to her fortune then? And so they went to 
she had no living relatives in her immediate family. Okay. They concluded that they don't think the woods were rightful heirs to her um, because she married him. Yeah, and so so what they decided was they would give it to um, the heirs of her grandparents of her like paternal grandparents in uh, Ireland. Oh, and so all of them just get a letter and they dispersed it across 20 families. So 20 different families that were going to get a million dollars never knew about her just got a million dollars in the mail (laughs) again. I don't (laughs) wish of anyone's demise unless I have a rich relative. I don't know. Then I hope they perish. (laughs) Can you imagine like, oh, hey, you're I can't imagine. It's all I can do. All I can do is imagine and dream and hope. You know, like a, you get a you get a letter from the U.S. government that says we regret to inform you that your great aunt Ida has passed away and after surviving at a hotel for twenty four years. Anyways, here's a million of her dollars. <laughs> that's what I wish ancestry dot com had is a how wealthy was this relative? You know, I would love to know on the twenty three and me chart where we're at. I'd love to know if we look up ancestry dot com. I would love to know which generation squandered our wealth. Yeah, which one of you? Which one of you suckers? We came from like this kings up. and queens, and then there was freaking Bart. And Bart drove us into the ground. He yeah. had an idea yeah. for a, a, a liquid ice cream, and you're like, dude, just sweet milk. That's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, your idea. You're just Bart is, sweet milk. Uh, yeah, it Couldn't was even, good though. It was good. <laughs> he just didn't market it right. He should have called the sweet milk. <laughs> that was that was weird. Everybody's like, I don't want no. I don't want Bart sweet milk. Get Bart sweet milk away from me. <laughs> Bart. <laughs> Bart sweet milk. <laughs> And then he had savory flavors <laughs> called Bart's broth, and like no Bart's one wanted broth. that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, man. No, <laughs> did you just hit your tooth on the mic? I did. Here's the thing: I pulled my earbuds out. I pulled my earbuds out on accident, and so I couldn't hear how I couldn't hear how far away I was. Oh, I couldn't. And you, ch- and, you chipped. And I, you chipped your tooth. Shut up. Like half your front tooth. I'm is not going to believe you on that right now. I I see through you. You're trying to pull some mind freak on me. It's not going to work. What about this dove? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Anyways, that's Ida Wood. Um, oh, that's the end. That's the end. Yeah, that's the end of the story. She she died. A lot of people got her money, and her story was pretty true. <laughs> Mostly true. It was true. Everything that she told was true, except for the. Part she lied about the beginning. She's like, the and honestly, was a like lie. you find her in that that last year of life is so annoying, but like you find her right, and she tells you this whole story. And at the end of it, if I'm her, I go, why would I have twenty million dollars and like lie to you right now? <laughs> like I've been living in this. Look at where I live. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> why would I lie? Why would I? Why would I say I had all? The, but I mean, that's the, that, that's the thing. Like people would be like, ah, okay, you got twenty million dollars. Anybody would look at that and say, oh, "You're lying to me." Okay, but she was just telling the truth. And and I mean, it's she. She said on the one of the things she said on the way out of the hotel or on the way out of the bank the day she got the hotel room, on her way out. <laughs> on the way out of the bank the day she got her hotel was uh, was um, I'm tired of it. <laughs> That's what she said. That's what she said. With the bag of a million dollars. She said, "I'm tired of it all." I'm sick of this. <laughs> yeah, and then she just stayed in a hotel room for 24 years. Wow, which is wild. So the lesson I what think. What do you think they did up there? Because it was 19. They didn't. There wasn't like TV. There was no video games. There's no just rub Vaseline in each other's faces. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know, man. There was really nothing to do. Counting their money. Yeah, I <laughs> eat crackers. Um, they said that they said that they set up like a little kitchenette in their bathroom that they were cooking food on. Um, You're rich. Why would you do this? I don't understand it. I don't understand okay. it. Okay, it's crazy, um, man. But uh, survived uh, survived the uh, Great Panic of 1907, and I mean, kind of the Great Depression. She died in the middle of it. And th- that's the crazy part is that those families in Ireland in the middle of the Great Depression just get a million crazy, dollars. Crazy, yeah, surplus, man. Wild yeah. stuff. So. That's the story about a wood. Um, so yeah, do your ancestry. Start looking for someone rich in your ancestry and lock them in a hotel room. 
<laughs> that's the lesson from this this oh, week's episode. A rich person? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're rich. I'm Why about to have so many Hilton <laughs> Honors points. <laughs> There's free breakfast and checkout yeah. is never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna be here for the rest of your life. You're gonna die in this room. Do they do that? But hey, the room likes you. Like, it, can you? What's the cutoff if you're not at an extended stay like motel? Like, if you're just at a normal mo- hotel, mm-hmm. is there a point where they're like, "You've been here too long"? Um, <laughs> like I feel like there's got to be a point. Like, if you went to a Holiday Inn, maybe not a Holiday Inn, but maybe. I, I, like a Lowe's, you went to a Lowe's hotel. How long could you stay before they say, "Sir, you've been here too long"? I don't know. I tried that. I tried to stay at a Lowe's for a long time, <laughs> and they kept asking. And they're like, hey, can "Sir, I help you, you find can't something? stay here. We, <laughs> can, can I we close at ten. <laughs> and I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, fiddle this off. Okay, fine. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Uh, If you like this and you want more episodes, there's more somewhere around here and also clips from the show, Uh, but make sure you subscribe. Please do that. That really helps us. Um, It makes us feel good. We look at the number and we go, oh my gosh, there's more people who like us. Um, And it also just makes sure that you don't miss episodes in the future because we put these out every single week and there's so many in the past, so many old episodes you can go watch. And you know, there's an entire season of episodes that we didn't even have video for. So you can go listen to those if you'd like to as well. Thanks for being here. We will see you again next week on on things I learned last night. That's this podcast, called, right? right? That's this one. Yeah, that's the one. Things that's, I learned last night. That's the one. All right, you're free to go. Great. <laughs>